Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I rise to support the motion. And Mr. Speaker, if you remember very well, in 2020, the country was invaded by locusts. And it is said that those insects consumed food that 35,000 people could consume in a day. Mr. Speaker, if we trace back the reason why our people are hungry, that is one of the factors that contributed to what we are going through today. Mr. Speaker, I believe the current government is putting measures to curb hunger. And I know they have embarked on a zero hunger agenda by one, providing relief food to the areas that are affected. And we have seen uh, the government distributing food, although not enough, but it has distributed food to some areas in this country. Number two, Mr. Speaker, immediately the cabinet was sworn in. They approved a cabinet paper on GMO. Mr. Speaker, contrary to what so many people think, GMO has been uh, used in so many countries as one way of mitigating hunger, Mr. Speaker, because it reduces the cost of production. By reducing the cost of production, Mr. Speaker, farmers are able to farm examples of um, the crops like uh, corn, soya bean, and of course rice, Mr. Speaker. So when the government uh, approved the use of GMO in this country, it opened the doors for us to discuss this issue and as a house come up with laws or regulations so that we can control the use of uh, this genetically modified uh, food. So Mr. Speaker, I do believe that uh, the government is working very hard to make sure nobody dies because of hunger. And I would want to ask this house to support the government. Because, Mr. Speaker, we cannot say that what is being done in 28, 29 countries is wrong. Other countries are using uh, uh, genetically modified food, Mr. Speaker, just to fight hunger. This kind of food, Mr. Speaker, and I, I know uh, that is the, uh, the, the motion that will be discussed later on, Mr. Speaker, they reduce the usage of pesticides, Mr. Speaker. And when you reduce the use of pesticides, you reduce the cost of production. When you reduce the cost of production, you increase production, hence getting the farmer something uh, to his pocket. So, Mr. Speaker, I support and I urge the government to add on to those measures that, have, that they, have, they have put in place and put more to make sure that nobody dies uh, from hunger. Mr. Speaker, we also understand agriculture is devolved and county governments are mandated to develop, to grow and to support sustainable agriculture. Mr. Speaker, I urge the Committee on Agriculture to invite the county executives for them to come uh, uh, before this house to explain what measures they are putting to make sure the people or our people do not die from hunger, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we understand so many county governments. The only thing they do is to give fertilizer, Mr. Speaker. And why do they do that? It's because some of them, Mr. Speaker, they have made it a kind of uh, uh, um, money-making venture, Mr. Speaker. So they only give fertilizer to the farmers. There are no extension officers who go direct to the farmer to see whether they are utilizing the fertilizer well, whether they are growing the crops the way they're supposed to do. And so without those extension officers, Mr. Speaker, we are unable, or the county government is unable um, to follow up uh, on what the farmer is doing 
to know exactly uh, whether the inputs that they have given to the farmers they are put in place or they are used well. So, Mr. Speaker, I urge this must be a collaboration between the national government and the county government, and more so the county government that is mandated uh, that, that uh, agriculture is devolved in full. So, I support, Mr. Speaker, the government to come with policies to curb hunger. Thank you.